today we're going to look at the harmonic drive FHA 11C with a 50 to 1 gear ratio and an absolute encoder. So we need to figure out how to wire up to this absolute encoder and we got to figure out which drive to use. So we'll use a plus drive and uh, we can see from the model number of the absolute encoder it's a single turn 17 bit multi turn 16 bit. So we've got 131,017 or 72 counts per rev. And then with the battery, you get 65536 multiple turns. The motor I have today is a 24 volt motor, so I will not be using a Zenus. I'll be using an Excelnet. And there's some good data about the FHA 11C. Uh, however, its torque is with respect to the output with a 50 to 1 gear, not with respect to the motor that's before the gear. So we have to divide the numbers. 8.3 Newton meters divided by 50 is the peak torque. And that helps us with the torque constant. And uh, we can also look up the rated current. So uh, that's not here, but that is in the specification sheet. And uh, it's about a four point something amp, but we can look that up in the catalog information. So for the critical factors today, it's how do I wire to this thing? You know, UVW, brushless motor wires to the motor power of the drive. And the encoder's got plus five volts with respect to ground. There's a shield. Make sure you hook up the frame to the shield and the frame of the drive to earth. Shields must find a path to earth. The data is communicated bi-directionally through the S and S knot. And then there's a battery. It's a lithium battery. Three point some odd volts for uh, typical lithium. This stores the absolute position for long periods of time. And you can unplug this thing for a little while and still store the, the, the position. It's got some good capacitance to it. But after a long while, it will discharge. And then your absolute position will go away and you'll get a battery fault. <clears throat> Maybe you don't use a battery. You can ignore the battery fault with a copley. But you won't have the absolute position anymore. So the drive I'm going to use is the Excelnet Plus BPL. Um, it's an 11 amp motor, so this is the drive you should select. It's only four point something continuous. I'm actually using a BPL 9006 that does six amps peak and six amps continuous. So I've had the drive slightly modified to give you my four amps all day. That's fine for most applications. But uh, you should spend a little bit more money and get the peak current. Um, it is a plus drive, so it's got all the fancy features. Um, the uh, harmonic drive absolute encoder is just an absolute encoder, uh, absolute A. Um, and we can see the wiring diagram for the absolute A on the copley. Yeah, it shows a battery. You know, whatever the encoder needs to hold position. Some encoders have gearings and stuff, more elaborate. But yeah, we output five volts. Uh, shield goes to frame. If there's an inner shield, that can go to signal ground with the five volts. Most of them have a braid outer or foil outer. Some have braid outer, individually shield twisted pairs, which connects to Copley. Um, the data, the plus five ground, and pin one for the frame. So we'll take a close look at what we got here. So I have the uh, harmonic drive miniature motor. Um, I've got it in the zero position on power up because I've moved it there. I don't think it comes from the factory that way. It's got some motor power wires. I've got them hooked up to the drive. There's some feedback wires 
a little scotch tape and jerry rig and I don't have to cut off the connector. So I've got that hooked up to the feedback. I have the stow installed, safe torque off jumper. I'm talking can with a Copley can USB 01. Goes in, terminator, last node, terminator at the Copley side. If they had multiple nodes, just take that terminator out, put it on the last drive. I can also talk over the serial port while I'm talking can. That's pretty cool. I've got this USB to RJ11. I like that. Real simple cabling. 24 volt power supply. That's a 24 volt motor. Let's not hook that up to a Zenus. That's too many volts. So a little 24 volt power supply. Uh, maybe 6 amps continuous would be pretty good. But if you're doing peak for more than that, you, you may need slightly larger. Um, that's it. The interesting thing will be the setup using CME2. I'm using CME2 version 7.1 beta. And I'm going at it over the CAN network. Finds the copy CAN interface, channel zero, one megabit, it's a single access card. On the drive, there's a node address switch. Switch it to one. So you got a CAN node out there if you're using CAN. Then you can connect to it. You can use serial too to connect to the drive if you want. I like the CAN, it's a little bit faster. So on the basic setup, brushless rotary, absolute A, position CAN, emulate it out. That's kind of cool. We could do a burst mode to absolute position on power up for people that like to use old fashioned external controllers. Just be careful of the maximum frequency limit at 131,000 counts per rev. And the harmonic drive data is entered here. I've got some inertia, 10 pole. The torque constant and current, the torque constant comes from that, you know, gear divided by 50. So the inductance and resistance, I doubled those because we're looking at two coils in series, not just one coil from the center to the outer. Uh, I got the vacuum F constant by just copying over newton meters per amp to volt per radians per second. Uh, continuous torque calculates out to the right value of continuous current based on the torque at the output of a 50 to 1 gear divided by 50. And then the peak torque, same thing. Uh, I set my max velocity limit, limit to 6,600 just so that I can go at the rated speed of 6,000. The feedback, 17 bit. Number of revolutions, 16 bit, 65536. Four megabits, that's the latest one. I can ignore the battery fault. I haven't got it yet because I haven't powered down long enough. But I don't have a battery connected, and eventually I will get a battery fault. Uh, we can calculate initial tuning parameters based on the good data. But then we're going to have to tune it. So taking a look at the current loop bandwidth. Uh, let's take a look at the control panel. Ah, auto setup checkbox. That makes life much easier. So I need some more gain. The current loop is a little sluggish there. That's eh, a little ringy. Knock it down a bit. Go for some integral. Oh, too much integral. Knock it down a bit. Still overshoot. Still overshoot. There you go. Current loop's done. Velocity loop. You can change the XL and D-cell parameters. You don't want to go too crazy for acceleration, especially if you have a load attached. Auto setup checkbox. Let's go current, actual current. Okay. Hit start. So while this is reading, looks like the gain's a little high, but actually I'm just going to output, <clears throat> move the output filter out of the way so I get more phase margin out of this thing, more gain margin.
So that, that's a little better. Oh, a little sluggish with the update rate here. But gathering lots of data. All right, that looks pretty good. Not too ringy. Okay, we're going to make a position move using the profile tab. Uh, I'm at the zero position now. I have 131,072 counts per rev, a gear of 50 to 1. So that's a really big number, 6553600 counts to get one rev at the output shaft. Uh, my trajectory limit, I should be able to go to the rated. Oh, I've got a warning about a current a velocity limit set on the V loop screen. Let's get that safety out of the way. We we want to go that fast. Always set this number 10% higher than what you want to go, at least. So now I should be able to put in 6,000. Yes, the number should be larger, but that's fine. Little, you, know, you may get a little overshoot, so leave yourself some headroom there. So I'm at the zero position now, and I'm going to go one rev at the output at full speed. Maybe I could gain a little bit for um, if I change my acceleration. 655-3600. Zero, zero. Let's see if we can trigger it now by doing the auto setup. Let's look at the current actual with no load. Let me try a little bit. Okay, so I can get some higher acceleration. Uh, I'm going to throw some more interval at it, get the settling a little quicker. So a little higher acceleration. Nice settling. There we go. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to overdo it with integration. If I hook up a load, you know, we may get a little overshoot on it. So I'm going to keep this number deliberately a little bit lower, assuming that someone's going to throw a big inertia on it. Maybe it's uh, one to one, fifty to one gear. We'll knock it down by 50 squared and then uh, before I go home on this one I'm just gonna send it back to the zero position so this is one way to home the thing is to set it to the zero position before you stick it on to the system but a another way to do this homing is you can uh, move you know attach the motor the to the mechanical system you know dial in the position you want it to be in for home so I'm going to subtract minus two two five two eight and do absolute immediate home so on power up or reset this will be the home position So I'm calibrated, I'm home, I'm referenced to home. Save all your hard work to flash. Uh, not a bad idea to save it to a file also. You know, to overwrite that. So if I reset this thing. Yes, I've already saved it. So I'm at the home. I'm home referenced. So it's all it's all calibrated. Um, I'm going to play with this some more in the future here. So I'm just going to change the homing method back to a normal one. So I'm not actually connecting it to the system. So I'm going to uncalibrate things and let it wait to get calibrated. Okay. Thanks for watching. Thank you.